Good evening, everyone. Uh, we will now begin the City of Boynton Beach City Commission meeting today, Tuesday, April 21st, 2020 at 5.31 p.m. Uh, we will start off with uh, a statement from our Chief Information Officer, John McNally. Yes. Yes, hello and welcome. My name is John McNally and I'll be providing assistance to the mayor and elected officials during today's meeting. Before we start, I'd like to review a few housekeeping items so the public audience knows how to participate. Your microphones may have been muted to reduce background noise during this public meeting. There will be specific times during this meeting when members of the public can ask questions and provide feedback. The first way is by typing their question into the question section at the bottom of the GoToWebinar interface. Those items will be read into the record by a meeting organizer at the appropriate time. Please be sure to include your name for the record. The second way is by using the GoToWebinar interface and clicking on the raise hand option. A meeting organizer will announce the speaker, unmute their phone, at which time the speaker should state their name for the record. Before speaking, please take steps to minimize any sources of background noise and speak clearly into your device during your allotted time. I will now turn over control to Mayor Stephen Grant, who will be presiding over today's meeting. All right. Thank you, John. Um, we will now uh, all bow our heads for an invocation led by Commissioner Woodrow Hay, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance led by Commissioner Christina Romulus. Let us pray. Father, we know that you are in control of these days and times that we live in. We ask now that you take control of this meeting as we venture using new technology. We pray, Father, that what we say and what we do will be pleasing in your sight. We ask, dear Father, that whatever we do, uh, it will be for the betterment of our citizens and this great city of Boynton Beach. Bless these commissioners and staff members, uh, city manager, and all that are involved with making this happen. We'll be so careful, Lord, to give you all the honor and all the praise. For it's in your Savior's name that we pray. Let every heart say amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. All right. Thank you very much. May I have a roll call, please? Mayor Stephen D. Grant. Present. Vice Mayor Justin Katz. Here. Commissioner Woodrow Hay. Here. Commissioner Christina Romulus. Present. Commissioner Typhon Serga. I am here. Mayor, we have a quorum. All right. Thank you so much. We will now begin with uh, proposed emergency ordinance number 20 009. Jim. An emergency ordinance of the City of Boynton Beach, Florida, renewing and extending emergency ordinance 20-008, authorizing all city public meetings to be conducted by communication media technology, authorizing the city manager to issue emergency orders or directives or declarations that conform with federal, state, or county orders, directives, or declarations, providing for automatic delay of finality of city commission action, pending post-commission meeting, public comments, and providing an effective date. All right, thank you. May I have a motion to approve? So move. move. Second. Second. All right, thank you. Uh, any further discussion from the board? Seeing none, all those in favor state so by saying, oh, may I have a roll call, please? Mayor Stephen B. Grant? Yes. Vice Mayor Justin Katz? Yes. Commissioner Woodrow Hay. Aye. Commissioner Christina Romulus. Aye. Commissioner Tyson Serga. Yes. Vote is 5 All right. Thank you very much. Now we'll be moving on to the official election results from the March 17, 2020 municipal election. Uh, uh, who will be presenting that? Crystal? The official election results for the March 17th municipal election for District 2, Commissioner Woodrow Hay, and for, for District 4, Commissioner Typhon Serga was elected. 
All right. And do we need a motion for that? Motion to accept. All right. May I have that, please? So move. Second. Thank you. All right. Any discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor, state so by saying aye. 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 All those. Any opposed? Hearing none. Motion passes unanimously. Congratulations. Thank you. And now that we have a new members uh, to the commission, we will be a selection of a vice mayor. I will open the floor for nominations. Mayor, I'd like to nominate Commissioner Ty Pinserga for the role of vice mayor. Second. That's a great nomination. Any uh, may have uh, any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor state so by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Hearing none. Motion passes unanimously. Congratulations. Moving thank on you, to the thank swearing. you for that nomination. Moving on to the, the swearing in. Commissioner Conserga, please raise your right hand. Aye, please state your name. I, Emir Tyrone Conserga. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly swear or affirm. That I will support, protect, and defend that I will support, protect, and defend the Constitution and government, the Constitution and government of the United States, of the United States, the state of Florida, the state of Florida, and the city of Boynton Beach, and the city of Boynton Beach, that I am duly qualified to hold office, that I am duly qualified to hold office under the Constitution and laws, under the Constitution and laws, of the state and the city of Boynton Beach. Of the state and the city of Boynton Beach. And that I will well and faithfully perform. That I will well and faithfully perform. The duties of vice mayor. The duties of vice mayor. Of the city of Boynton Beach, Florida. Of the city of Boynton Beach, Florida. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. And thank you all. Congratulations. Yes. Now we're going to move on to agenda approval. Um, I'd like to move up item three in, brunt, in front of uh, 1D so that we have the announcements, community special events, and presentations before the, the CRA board special meeting. We have a motion to approve as amended. So move. Second. All right, any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor state so by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Hearing none, motion passes unanimously. Our first announcement will be from Senator Lori Berman and Representative Joseph Casello to provide an update of the legislative session. So I'll ask uh, Jim or Lori to turn off their webcam so that we can have uh, Lori or Senator Berman uh, come on screen for us. Okay, I can hear you. They, they're saying it's saying that I can't get on because it's right. too long. Here we go. Here we go. Great. Hey. Here we go. Yes. Great. Excellent. Good evening, Mayor, uh, newly elected Vice Mayor. Congratulations, and Commissioners, especially uh, our re-elected our new, our previous Commissioner Wooden Hayes. Glad to see you back up there on the dais. Um, and um, I can't believe we're having, yeah, I can't believe we're having to do this meeting this way, and it, it speaks a lot about what's going on in the world. And um, it's a really tough time for all of us when we are out there. I want you to know um, your state uh, legislators and your federal and everyone, and I'm sure all of you too are out there in the community trying to address all these issues that we have going on right now. Um, we're working really hard on the issue of unemployment. Um, as you know, the Florida system is really disastrous. Um, we've only paid something like 6% of the claims, even though this has been going on for a month. Um, so we're going to continue to advocate for you on those issues. And my office, as you all know, is in Boynton Beach, right in the Children's Service Council building at Gateway in 95, and we are there for you. Um, my Most of my staff is working remotely, but they are occasionally going in, but we're always available by telephone and email, and we are, you know, most responsive to everything. 
I wanted to just give you, you know, normally this is the time of year when I come and I give you an update on, on what happened in Tallahassee. Um, it almost seems irrelevant at this point, given the world situation, but I do want to give you a little bit of an update on what's happened and, and where we are in the legislative, legislative session. Um, so I always start by telling you what we did in terms of preemption so that you know where, what areas you can pass legislation in. Um, I will tell you, this was a really good year for the um, cities and counties. A lot of the preemption bills did not pass at all. Um, there was nothing done to change vacation rentals, so that remains the way it is, which is a good thing because they were trying to limit it even more. Um, we did one minor bill having to do with growth management. It's SB 410. It, you will have to change your comp plan uh, by July 1, 2023. So you have a, lo a long time. It's some minor issues that they want you to put in. Um, and there was some discussion about towing, which was HB 133. Um, but Palm Beach County was always fine on that issue because um, the, the preemption was going to be to say that you couldn't require a tow company to take a credit card. But now in Palm Beach County, towing companies have to take a credit card, and that was always grandfathered in. The one real change had to do with the sunscreen bill. So you are not allowed to pass any legislation trying to limit the chemicals in sunscreen. That was a preemption that the, the state did do this year. The governor has not yet signed that bill, and there's a possibility he might veto it, because if you remember last year, he vetoed the straw bill, so um, the plastic straw bill last year. So there's a possibility we still may be able to, to do something on that issue, but that was the one really big preemption bill this year. Um, the budget. Uh, Sadly, and, and good and the good and bad. The good was it was one of the best budgets in my 10 years in, in the legislature. We had a $93 billion budget. Some of the real highlights, um, $500 million for teacher pay, um, $100 million for Florida Forever land buying, $370 million fully funding for the first time in 10 years, the Sadowski Affordable Housing Trust Fund. I know it's fantastic, but I'm a little worried and we'll talk about that. Um, $335 million for 3% state employee raises. Um, and then $300 million, which doesn't sound like a lot, but we worked really hard at the end because remember we ended March 14th and then we came back and voted on the budget on March 19th. And at that point, we put 300 million for coronavirus. Um, things were just starting to get active at that point in time. So it was a lot of effort to get 300 million. Now it's probably a drop in the bucket. So let's talk about that issue. Um, the budget is, is probably gonna need to be significantly changed. We will, pro our, our state year starts July 1st, I anticipate that we will be back in Tallahassee for a special session and that a lot of the items in the budget will be uh, slashed, unfortunately, and I'm worried especially about the Sadowski Housing Fund. Um, and we will see what happens as the, the special session comes up. Um, I think that and maybe the Florida Forever funding and also some of the individual project, city projects and things like that are probably going to be subject to, to being vetoed or to being slashed out of the budget. So that's the unfortunate thing because of coronavirus. Um, a couple of good things that we did on the environment. We passed a bill to try and limit blue green algae. We've got a lot of regulations in there and there is some money in there for septic to sewer. Um, in healthcare, we passed um, two pieces of legislation that make it easy. We, we, we allow, we're allowing nurses to have independent practice, and we're also allowing pharmacists to do um, strep tests and flu tests. I have a little concern, especially about the pharmacist one, um, because I don't really want sick people coming into a CVS or a, a right, the governor Pat, the governor signed that bill already, and it is the law. Um, and then on education, the, the bill I'm really excited about this year is for Alyssa Aladoff, who was one of the victims of Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. 
and we're have, gonna have panic alarms in all of our school classrooms. So that's a little bit of a summary. Um, like I said, everything going on in the world, it's, it's a little strange to be doing legislative updates at this point in time, but, and, and my office is, I would say, 99%, maybe 100% totally focused right now on coronavirus. Um, we are working on figuring out how to feed people. We are working on domestic violence issues. We are working on unemployment insurance. We are working now on children who are in the uh, child abuse system. There, this, um, we're working on getting testing. We do have two testing sites, as you know, in Palm Beach County. Actually, we have three, and we're including one in Delray Beach at the Civic Center, and we're working on PPE, the personal protective equipment, making sure that our medical medical providers have enough of it. Um, so that's kind of an update. I'm happy to answer any questions, and um, I'm glad to be with you, even in this new format. Thank you. Right. Yes, uh, Commissioner Pinserga. Uh, uh, Senator Berman. Pinserga, I'm sorry. It's all good. Senator Berman, thank you for all of your hard work. I remember I had a chance to speak with you up in Tallahassee and you know, we had so many things to cover from the affordable housing to uh, the teacher pay. But, you know, one of the topics I really want to talk to you about, I didn't get a chance to, was about your insulin bill. Mm -hmm. And as you know, many Americans need insulin and the price of insulin has absolutely skyrocket skyrocketed. And with everything that's happening with COVID, and how people's insurances are tied to their employment and now they're out of work you know what happened to the insulin bill and and is there any hope for reviving that um unfortunately yeah, it was actually my colleague senator janet cruz and she i was co-sponsor co with her um unfortunately it, i think it got one hearing in one committee and it didn't get any traction and just to remind everyone that bill would limit the amount that they could charge for insulin to a hundred dollars one a month so it's still a pretty significant amount of money um it didn't get any traction but now there is a lot of discussion in tallahassee about what we can do to give people more health care options um we have the senate democratic caucus wrote a letter to the um, president and the governor asking him to expand medicaid if we expanded medicaid in the state a lot more people would get coverage um so and that's we've also asked it to be the topic of any special session to be included in any special session topic um so it's possible that something like the insulin bill could become uh on the front burner when we have all this discussion but um there's just so many things going on right now i don't know you know what will what will be on the special session agenda at this point right understood well thank you sure Mr. Right. Hayes? Yes. Hi, Senator Laura Berman. I just wanted to um, thank you for that report and talk a little bit about the, uh, you know, the nursing homes bearing the bunt of death and infection. And has there been any discussion as far as shifting some funds in the budget to to take a look at that? Because that that's a great part of our community. And uh, I'm just a little concerned about that. That's an amazing, that's a great question. Um, and actually today, uh, if you saw, so there's a, a lot of different things going on. Let's kind of step back on this issue. Um, first of all, I think originally it was one in five deaths are now related, were related to nursing homes or assisted living facilities, long-term care facilities. I think that number has even increased now, and I think it's actually one in four deaths are now related to a long-term care facility. Um, so that's that number is very high and very scary. Um, the governor originally was not released the names. Um, over the weekend, he released the names of the facilities, and there are 36, I believe, in Palm Beach County, which is a really high number. I think we're the second in the whole state, only behind Miami-Dade. Um, my office today started calling the nursing homes in our district and the long-term care facilities that were on that list to ask them if they needed any help, what we could do. We've been in touch very much. We have meetings twice a week with all our delegation and Dr. Alonzo and Dr. Alonzo and the county have told us they are in touch with all the nursing homes 
and they have what they call, um, they have a team, I forget the name of it, they have like a rapid response team, a strike team, I think they call it, that if there is a case, they go right in and they start testing everyone and they make sure that the people who are positive are being isolated and if anybody needs to go to a hospital, they're taking them to the hospital. Um, but it's a big problem and we do, we are probably going to need to allocate more money to, and I just spoke to someone who has a nursing home and she, she raised a point that I didn't even really think of. She said to me, all the healthcare workers are being put out as heroes, which they are, there's no question in my mind. She said, we are doing the same thing and we are almost vilified in the press because we're being, they're saying, oh, everybody in these facilities has COVID. Um, and they are really working as hard as they can and doing everything they can. So I think we need to show our appreciation to the nursing home personnel and the long-term care um, personnel also. But um, we're going to continue to push for more money and more testing and more help for those facilities because they are certainly the frontline problem area that we're going to continue to see as this disease continues to ravage our community. Thank you for that response. I, I, and I just want to thank you for your letter of congratulations too. That was just outstanding. And I'm looking forward to, to working with you again. Thank you, me too. All right. Uh, is there any other questions from the, the commission? All right, well, thank you so much, uh, Senator Berman. Uh, we really appreciate all your advocacy that you do on behalf of all of the our residents here of the city of Boynton Beach and the city uh, itself. So thank you. We look forward to seeing you uh, again soon uh, yeah. with any more updates. At some point, hopefully. All right. All right. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, uh, Representative Casello, are you there? I see a blank screen. I don't know if you uh, have your microphone unmuted. John. Uh, I, I do see Representative Casello is on there. Uh, it does not show that he's connected to the audio. He might be having some technical issues. Let me let me see what I can do here. Okay. So we have a blank screen, but no microphone. His status does show that he's not connected to the audio. I'm not sure what the technical issue is on the back end. Okay. So my apologies. Um, we'll see if uh, one of our staff members can uh, contact him uh, through. Uh, a cell phone and see if we can't get him up there. Um, but now I'll request that the, the commission uh, recess the city commission meeting uh, so that we can start uh, the CRA board special meeting. I'll move. Okay. Do, second. Do I have a second. All right, thank you so much. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All the, any opposed? Hearing none, motion passes unanimously. All right, may I have a motion to reconvene the city commission meeting at 7 o'clock p.m. on April 21st, 2020. Move. Second. All those in favor, state so by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Hearing none, motion passes unanimously. Uh, we'll begin with informational items by members of the city commission. Uh, I do note that if you stated an item for the CRA, you may have to repeat your item for the city commission. Uh, because uh, those uh, those individuals may be coming in front of both boards. Um, Commissioner Katz, would you like to begin? I spoke to Bradley Miller regarding some projects on the east side, and that is it. All right. Uh, Commissioner Haig? Uh, same. I spoke with uh, Bradley Miller on his two projects in District 2 and, and 3. All right. Uh, Commissioner Romulus? I also spoke with Bradley Miller and received an email from Jim Knight, but I believe that that was our previous board meeting, so we're good. All right. Vice Mayor Penserga. I had the similar conversations with uh, Bradley Miller, but other than that, uh, that's all for disclosures. All right. Um, 
Uh, myself, yes, uh, I spoke with Bradley Miller. I received uh, numerous emails from our residents and uh, unincorporated Boynton Beach uh, regarding um, their different insights uh, of what uh, the city should be doing. I want to thank everyone. I want to thank all of the, the businesses and nonprofits that are extending um, a helping hand to our residents. And uh, I also want to give the, the good news that uh, I had a daughter born on March 29th. Her name Yay. is... Uh, yeah, Esty Lila, <laughs> and so good things that do happen, and so I'm very excited uh, to raise her here in the city. Congratulations! Of Thank Congratulations! You. All right. So now we will. Uh, is there any other informational items by the members of the city commission? Seeing none, we will move to public audience. Individual speakers will be limited to three-minute presentations. I will have a timer running. Um, please state your name and address. Uh, before you begin, and you may, yes. We forgot Laura. Did you want her to do the census uh, update real quick? We did forget Laura. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Laura, I am sorry for forgetting you. Would you like to uh, uh, give us an update on the census? Sure. Thank you so much. Good evening, everyone. This is Laura Landsberg, Marketing Manager for the City of Boynton Beach. I just wanted to provide a brief announcement about the 2020 Census. The U.S. Census Bureau began accepting responses on March 12, 2020. As of April 19th on the Census website, it reflects that Boynton Beach's response rate is 48.2%. I wanted to take the opportunity to remind residents, if they haven't already done so, to please respond to the U.S. Census. You may do so in three ways, online, via phone, and via paper form. As a city, we continue to market the census. We are asking trusted community leaders to assist us with our outreach effort. More information about the census, including frequently asked questions, can be found on the city's website, boynton-beach.org slash census. When responding to the census, please remember to count your children. Mayor, that includes your new daughter. Yes. Seasonal <laughs> residents count where they are living on April 1st. While the COVID-19 pandemic caused the cancellation of several community census events in March, the, the city is still available to assist with any questions. Email us at marketing at bbfl.us or call 561-742-6010. Thank you so much. All right, thank you. Uh, does the board have any questions for uh, Laura regarding the census? Yes, Commissioner Romulus. No questions. I just want to thank Laura because she was on um, uh, my virtual town hall with me uh, yesterday, her along with Sandy Goodman, giving uh, just a ton of incredible information to the members of the public. So thank you for that, Laura, and, and really just keeping up the hard work, even though the things have been changed and upended somewhat. Uh, you're still putting out the effort out there to make sure that we get every single Boynton Beach resident counted. So thank you and keep up the great work. Thank you so much. Thank you for hosting that, by the way. That was fantastic. <laughs> All right. And so uh, now we can move on to a public audience. Um, so uh, attendees, if you'd like, uh, there is the, the raise your hand uh, button or if you would like to type in a question. All right. Do we have anyone raising their hand? Mayor Grant, uh, currently I do not see any uh, raised hands or active questions to be answered. All right. Um, Don't going wait. once. Now we now we do. Okay. Uh, a question from Susan Oyer. Remind everyone that Wednesday is Earth Day. Mm -hmm. Correct. And so. Um, I don't know if it's on the agenda, but uh, at 3 p.m. at the Intracoastal Park Clubhouse, uh, the city and community greening will be planting some socially distanced trees. Are the trees right. distance? Yes, <laughs> at least six feet apart. Otherwise, they wouldn't grow properly. Okay. Right. All right. Is there any other uh, questions? or hand raises. All right, going hold, once. Hold, 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 hold. Yes. I would like to say that, uh, uh, announce that 
to those, you know, the unemployment forms have been a challenge to get hold hold of, and the Boynton Beach Coalition of Clergy, uh, working with uh, Bishop Kenneth Jones, and somehow they they got hold to these forms, and they are available at his church, which is right around the corner from St. John. I think it's the uh, Church of God in Christ. Uh, Bishop Kenneth Jones is the uh, pastor there. So if you need unemployment forms, uh, you can go to that church and, uh, and pick one up. That's the, the one on Northeast 7th Avenue and uh, Northeast 1st Street? That's correct. That's correct. All right. Thank you. Um, Mayor Grant, I have another comment made by Susan Oyer. It says, don't forget to take the Climate Action Pledge. And then I also have a uh, hand raised by Lou Steele Gustav, and I have just requested to unmute her phone. All right. Lucille, your phone may be muted by yourself at your end. We get it. No. So it is Lucy. Her phone is his her phone is self muted. Yep. All Lucille, right, we'll give it you, would like, you would like to talk, I guess. There you go. Yes, I'm here now. Can you All hear right. me? Yes, we can. Yes, beautiful. My name is Amos. I'm Lucille's husband. Um eighty two oh two White Rock. I just have a basic um simple questions. When can we expect them to get back to normal? <laughs> uh, we would all like that answer now, wouldn't yeah. we? Um, the ball. I, I mentioned in the, the CRA uh, board meeting that the, the county um, of Palm Beach through the county administrator, they are working with uh, the governor and the uh, neighboring counties to the south of Broward, Miami-Dade and Monroe so that we ha have a phased opening of our society and, so that we do not overtax uh, certain cities or counties and that way we can open everything up to our residents at once in a orderly fashion um, you know i think the the one uh, the first thing is is that the the curve of new cases has to be going down um, for about two weeks and so we have seen uh, a spike here and there in palm beach county and broward um, and so it's it's something that we have to take day by day, and it's like as I mentioned, it's it's day by day. So we have to wait a full week to see what's happened for seven days and two, you know, 14 days to see what's happened in two weeks. So that's kind of uh, where I would suggest you look at the uh, state's dashboard, which has ind information based upon individual counties and individual zip codes plus uh, the information from John Hopkins regarding the, the country and the world. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. Thank you for the question. Okay, his uh, phone has been muted. I see no further questions or raised hands, Mayor. All right, going once. Up, oh, city manager. I just wanted to remind everybody the, the unemployment forms are also available at the library outside. We have a staff in uh, three languages. Um, so there, we're keeping that replenished as well. All right. Okay. And that was from uh, Craig Clark. Okay. Um, any further? Going twice, going three times. All right. Public audience is now closed, and we're going to move on to administrative with proposed resolution uh, number 20-025. Um, appoint a city commission representative and alternate to the countywide intergovernmental coordination program. Um, uh, Lori, who is our appointee and alternate from last year? Uh, Vice Mayor Pensergra, and I'm the alternate. Okay. Uh, I nominate uh, Vice Mayor Pensergra and city manager to be the alternate. Do I have a second? I'll second that. All right. All those in favor, state so by saying aye. Aye. All, right. Right. All opposed? Hearing none, motion passes unanimously. 
uh, proposed resolution number 20-026. I believe that um, uh, Commissioner Katz it was the representative. Um, do Who was the alternate? I think Christina. Right. Okay. So I'd like to uh, nominate uh, those two individuals for their respective positions. I'll second that. Yes. Mayor, I'd like to relinquish if anybody would like to take it. Okay. Um, Vice uh, Mayor or uh, Commissioner Hay, it's uh, the Wednesday morning. Uh, I think it's the third Wednesday. And and I would be open to it if would Commissioner Hay is not interested. Uh, what time is it? Nine uh, o'clock to nine thirty. I think it starts, and that is where the I, you know I sometimes attend, but not as um, a delegate, just as the mayor to learn about what uh, unincorporated Boynton Beach is doing. I will um, take that. I will take it. Okay. So I, I will uh, amend my nomination um, to allow uh, for Commissioner Katz and Commissioner Hay as alternate to COBRA. So moved. Yep. Second. All those in favor state so by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Hearing none, motion passes uh, unanimously. Um, Moving on to item 5C, um, I had the, the position, I believe, as the city commission representative alternate to the, the Palm Beach County League of Cities. I relinquished uh, my board position as, um, and I see your hand raised from Christina Romulus, then Woodrow. So uh, I will uh, nominate um, Commissioner Romulus and then as the regular and Commissioner Hay as the alternate. May I have that uh, motion? So move. Second. Second. All right. Thank you. All those in favor, state so by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Hearing none. Um, next, we have proposed resolution number 20-028, appoint a city commission representative and alternative to the transportation planning agency. Uh, I'd like to uh, continue my role there. I was able to attend the Association of Metropolitan Planning Organizations in Baltimore last year. I'm on the Palm Trans Service Board and the Disadvantaged Traveler Local Coordinating Board. Um, I feel that I've been doing what I can to help, you know, make sure that transportation is uh, moving in the city. And, uh, you know, I uh, think that we need to work better with the county because one of the statistics that I heard at the last TPA meeting was that traffic is down 45% um, since the start of the state of emergency. So, um, do I have a person who would like to be the alternate? I will. Okay. Commissioner Hay? Yep. Okay. All right. Do I have a second? Second. 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 All right. All those in favor, state so by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion passes uh, unanimously. All right. And we're going to move on to appoint eligible members of the community to serve in vacant positions on the CRA Advisory Board. And let's get that up. So I believe we have three applicants. For three positions, uh, we have two regular and one alternate uh, position available for the Building Board of Adjustments and Appeals, one uh, non-voting student for the Education Youth Advisory Board, and we have one applicant for the Historic Resource Preservation Board. Uh, Vice Mayor Penserga, would you like to make a, a nomination? Sure. I see that there is one applicant, uh, Bernard Wright. I nominate Bernard Wright for the regular position on the Historic Resources Preservation Board. All right. Do I have a second? Second. All right. All those in favor state so by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. Uh, Mr. Wright is now on the Historic Resources Preservation Board. Um, moving on to the Senior Advisory Board, we have two positions The for uh, two applicants for three positions. Um, Commissioner Romulus, would you like to begin? 
Yes, I'd like to uh, nominate Ina Trueheart. All right. And do I have a second? Second that. All right. All those in favor, state so by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. Motion passes unanimously. And then Vice Mayor Penserga, we have another applicant for a regular position. I nominate Earl Harper for the regular position of the Senior Advisory Board. All right. Do I have a second? Second. Second. All right. All those in favor, state so by saying an aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion passes unanimously. Moving on to consent agenda. Would anyone like to pull an item from consent agenda? Uh, yes, Mayor, I'd like to pull item uh, 6G. Okay. Is there any other items that wish to be pulled? <clears throat> So we will go with item 6G, accept surtax capital project status and capital improvement project amendment report for the second quarter of fiscal year 2019-20, January through March. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I, I was looking through the list of projects and I, I noticed that there was some, well, first I'd like to ask if we could get an update uh, from our public works director regarding the Meadows Park. I noticed that some of the status of the, some of the projects have changed uh, and I'd like to understand what the situation is. All right, so John, let's see if we can find. Um, Andrew's on. I have unmuted Andrew Mack. Good evening, uh, Andrew Mack, Director of Public Works and Engineering. Um, yes, uh, I'm ex excited that the uh, Meadows project is, uh, we, we have a, uh, contractor with the uh, design firm 2GHO. We're progressing. The project is now at 30% drawings. Um, we're hoping to uh, have the, the drawings completed uh, within the next 90 days and uh, and, and have a better idea of uh, the final cost. All right. Andrew, I, um, I'm looking, hold on just one moment. I'm looking for the line item. Um, I see Boynton Lakes, I see Knollwood, here we go. I noticed that some of the um, the status had changed to re-evaluating project. So for example, with the ADA playground equipment and um, the sidewalk repair, uh, could you give a more specific update what's happening with those items? Why are we re-evaluating those projects? Sure. Um, so. Since there's an overall site um, improvement project with the that's planned, we're now going to fold those improvements into that project when that overall entire project is done. Gotcha. All right. Thank you. All right. That was it. Any other are there any other questions? If I no other questions from the board, may I have a motion to approve item six G. So moved. Okay. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. All those in favor state so by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. Item 6G is passed. May I have a motion to approve the remainder amount of consent agenda. So move. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor state so by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. Motion passes unanimously. Consent and bids and purchases over 100,000. Would anyone like to pull any of those items off the consent over 100,000? Motion to approve. Second. All right, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor state so by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion passes unanimously. Uh, we're on to item eight, uh, public hearing. I believe all items are, nope, we have it, items A, B, C, and D are tabled to a future meeting, um, but item 8E, proposed ordinance number 20-007, second reading. Uh, Jim? An ordinance of the city of Boynton Beach, Florida, establishing a sunset date for the Boynton Beach Community Redevelopment Agency, CRA, 
providing for repeal of all ordinances in conflict, severability, and an effective date. All right. May I have a motion to approve? So move. Do I have a second? Second. All right. As this is a second reading of an ordinance, I uh, will make uh, the availability of the public to answer, ask any questions or to raise uh, their hand. Uh, John, if you could uh, allow that feature. Okay, that has been enabled, Mayor. Thank you so much. And I will wait a good 10 seconds to see if anyone would like to ask a question or to raise their hand. All right, and I'm seeing no new questions and no raise hands. Uh, any comments from the board? Saying none, may I have a roll call, please? Mayor Stephen B. Grant? Yes. Vice Mayor Tyson Serga? Yes. Commissioner Justin Katz? Yes. Commissioner Woodrow Hay? Yes. Commissioner Christina Romulus? Aye. Vote is 5 0. All right, thank you. Moving on to item 9A, uh, city manager's report. Thank you, Mayor. Um, our Director of Economic Development and Strategy, David Scott, uh, has worked with John in taking a look at um, the little bit of grant money, not compare, compared to the CRA that we have potentially available to help some of our local businesses outside of the CRA and potentially repurpose some of that funding. So I'd like to ask David to um, present this concept to you and see, see what you think. All right. So we'll unmute David. Scott? David. There we are. Good evening, uh, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Commissioners. Um, David Scott, Director of Economic Development and Strategy for the City of Boynton Beach. Uh, we'd like to present this concept of creating a grant to support our businesses that have been impacted by COVID-19. Uh, we understand that uh, many of our businesses, small businesses within the city of Boynton Beach are struggling. Uh, they're struggling with rent payment, they're struggling with payroll, and they're struggling to uh, just make it from day to day. So we've identified approximately $42,000 from our existing um, grants that we provide for rent reimbursement, as well as commercial build out, and found an additional uh, $18,000 from uh, our community-based, one of our community-based programs uh, to support a grant in, in the amount of a total of $60,000. Our approach is to uh, open this up to grants in those categories, rent reimbursement, um, utility, as well as payroll uh, in, in the amount of $3,000 each for a total of about, uh, for a total of 20 businesses on a first come first serve basis. Uh, we will be able to open this up and be prepared to accept applications this Thursday. Um, and those applications will be available online through our website. Um, again, the we really are looking to support our local businesses. And because as Lauren mentioned, it is a small amount of money we, we are only able to offer $3,000 grants. We wanted to spread it as much as possible, and we know that there's a lot more out there that needs to be done. All right, and uh, thank you, David. Um, and so, uh, any questions from the commission? I'm seeing everyone's hands raised, so I will go down the list. Um, Commissioner Hay, would you like to begin? Okay, um, that's good. The, the sixty thousand dollars. I'm just wondering, um, with what we just went through with the CRA, uh, I, I want as much as possible to be on the same page uh, with the city and the CRA. Um, I, I know that there's a vast difference between um, what do you say, three thousand versus ten thousand, but certainly uh, I think there need to be some conversation to make sure that. We're not in left field in one area and, 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 and not the same place in the other. 
So I just want to make sure that there's some dialogue there uh, based on what we did in the CRA, uh, that the city would be uh, compatible. Uh, Commissioner, that, that is correct. We have worked lockstep with the CRA on this uh, on this grant program and the approach. And what I would offer that we didn't um, include and the CRA did at this time is the ability to get the grant into our businesses' hands faster. So we, uh, we do appreciate and do not object to uh, changing this from a reimbursable grant to a loan similar to the CRA get the money into their hands a lot quicker, and then request the uh, supporting documentation later on. Our grants are, are year based upon a fiscal year, so I don't see that uh, opportunity going beyond, um, beyond the end of this fiscal year. And because they are so small, we will probably expend these funds fairly quickly. The other thing that I would add, also add, and uh, our city attorney could certainly support, is to be able to push that administrative approval to the uh, to the city manager, so we can make these awards a lot faster. Very good. All right, Commissioner Pen uh, Vice Mayor Penserga. Thank you. Uh, it sounds like you both beat me to it. Um, that was exactly the point that I was going to bring up. I want to make sure this money gets into people's hands faster. So I'm definitely in favor of converting this into of the same format as a CR, CRA grant, this uh, forgivable loan grant program. So uh, thank you for all of that, David, and all the work that you do. Thank I think you. this is wonderful. We recognize that this isn't the largest amount of money, uh, but 3,000 is something, and um, we are doing the best we can, and, and uh, I, I know lots of people will appreciate this. So thank you for everything. All right. Thank you. Okay, uh, Commissioner Romulus. Yes, um, I just wanted to echo those sentiments and and just um, you know commend you, David and and John um, as well, who I know works with you closely. Uh, you know, three thousand is nothing to you know be sad or, or disheartened about. I think three thousand coming into a small business owner's hand is is uh, especially as a grant, not as a loan that needs to be paid back is something that you know we, we can't just shake our heads at. So this is still a great program and. Um, we're grateful that we have, again, the opportunity to do it, and we're able to do it for our small businesses here in Boynton, and we can expand outside of um, just the CRA borders to help everybody within the city limits of Boynton Beach. Um, one question I do have is, um, I just want to make sure we are not double dipping. Does this strictly uh, only apply to businesses outside of the CRA? Uh Businesses within the CRA can apply, but we will not allow um, the businesses to double dip. So, for example, if a business was awarded a rent reimbursement by the CRA, they could not apply for a rent reimbursement from the city. But if they apply for utility, we would certainly look at that supporting documentation and consider that. Correct. Okay, so, uh, so there's going to be collaboration between the two entities to make sure that um, business owners are not so, like basically I just don't want where people are getting left out where if they couldn't get it one place they could get it another place and we're seeing that it it just people are just getting left out but people are getting double the the, the funding does that make sense yes yeah and, uh, I, I don't think we can discriminate uh, with this to say only outside the CRA however we can put in language that disqualifies uh, applicants who receive CRA funding um, to this program. And I think that's something that, uh, I guess I'll ask Jim, is that something we can do? Uh, yes, Mayor, you can do that. There's great flexibility in the program as outlined, so you could do that by amendment to the program guidelines. So that's kind of what I would wanna say is that any um, applicant who has received CRA funding within the past five years, knowing that the CRA has much uh, deeper pockets um, for those people to go there. Um, and now I'll open it to uh, Commissioner Mayor. Katz. Yep. Oh, thank you very much. That's kind of what I was going to ask if if legal could weigh in. If, if there's no way to exclude CRA businesses, and I say that I, I would want to exclude them if that was possible, not just because of double dipping, but if you're in the CRA and there's funds available through the CRA and you take a city grant, 
you've taken a finite grant from non-CRA businesses when you, is if we can't put it in language, can it be procedure for the city to, if they see an address in the CRA and they know their CRA funds to just steer them so they don't take the city grant when there is CRA funds available? You could do it either procedurally or you could do it as an outright exclusion of businesses that are located in the CRA who are otherwise okay. eligible for CRA funding. That would not be discriminatory. Yeah, I so, kind of, I wouldn't mind leaning in that direction only because you, we're talking about, you know, almost a million dollars versus 60 grand. And, you know, I, I could see if the CRA ran out of money, which, you know, hopefully that. I mean, it could happen pretty quick with the way things go, but I would want some sort of protection so that since it's a first come first serve thing that if if city businesses outside the CRA jump on it, you know, a minute too late and I just want to protect the 75, 80 something percent of businesses that have no access to the CRA funds. And that was our original intent, Commissioner. I think if you're in the CRA, utilize that program. You're absolutely right. With only $60,000, it's not going to go all that far. I think we need to separate them both out. And uh, I guess my question is, is that do we also exclude certain businesses um, from receiving this grant similar to the CRA? So gun sales, um, liquor stores, smoke shops are not entitled? Yeah, it follows our um, same criteria that we use um, similar to the CRA for our rent reimbursement and commercial build out. Um, okay. So yeah, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, what I would also, I'm sorry, would I also add is that we will be making an announcement on Facebook Live on giving, giving the approval tonight, uh, should the commission approve uh, this grant, we'll be making a Facebook Live announcement uh, Thursday at 1.30 p.m. Uh, mm -hmm. for businesses to inform them of the existing the existence of the grant and should the commission approve tonight we could and the applications come in we could probably have money available by the first week of may excellent okay so um may I have a motion to approve the the program as amended uh with re restricting or limiting uh cra businesses from accessing uh, these funds. So moved. Second. Second. Uh, uh, Mayor, excuse me. Yes. There is a, a raised hand. All right, okay. thank I'm you. Sorry. Could, uh, Mayor, um, we were also asking that the city manager have the authority to administer the grant. All right, and so I see a raised hand from Susan Oyer. I Would will. Like to... yeah, I got I... her. Yep, okay. So, Ms. Oyer. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Can you hear us? Hey. Susan Oyer, 140 Southeast 27th Way. Um, I'm just curious, uh, how will people, where will they look to find this application for this $3,000? Is there a phone number like with CRA or where will they look on the city website? It, it, it wants, may I respond? Yes, you may, please. Yeah. Um, certainly, um, on giving the approval of the city commission this evening, applicants will be able to apply, apply online at yboyton.com or contact the city's Department of Economic Development and Strategy at 561-742-6014 or email John Durgan directly at Durgan, D-U-R-G-A-N-J at bbfl.us. Uh, David, can you give us that uh, uh, website one more time? It is the yboyton.com, W-H-Y-B-O-Y. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. W-H-Y-B-O-Y-N-T-O-N dot yes. com? Dot com, yes. All right. That is the economic development, brings you directly to the economic development website. All right, excellent. Okay. Uh, John, do we have any further questions or raised hands? At at this point, I oh uh, nope, that is it. Just a question from Susan Oyer, in addition to her uh, spoken question on on the uh, phone. So that is yep. has been answered. Yep. All right. Thank you. 
We already have a motion and a second. Uh, uh, Commissioner Hay, yes. Yes, I, I just, uh, the only form of, of marketing this, if we go ahead and pass this tonight, is that they are listening or are, are we going to market any kind of way or, or just a matter of them reading the website and knowing that this is available from the city? In, a, in addition to Facebook Live, we will push it out on our social media. We also will email it directly to our BTR list. So every business will uh, be informed of the existence of the grant. Thank you. We also yes. add it to our city newsletter as well. Good. Excellent. Good. All right. So any further uh, discussion from the commission? Seeing none, all those in favor state so by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion passes unanimously. Uh, Thank good you. work, uh, team. Thank you. All right. Uh, there's no unfinished business, and now we will move to new business uh, with a short presentation and discussion by utility staff regarding the septic tank inspections. Joe Paterniti will present this item. All right. And does he, do we have a presentation? Uh, just a second. I'll have that loaded. All right. Excellent. Good evening, commissioners. This is Joe Paternitti, uh, utility director. Can you hear me okay? We can hear you fine. Excellent, excellent. Let's go to the next slide, John. Thank you. Uh, septic systems are permitted by the county in, in uh, Florida, by the county health department. And the Florida administrative code provides design, permitting, and construction monitoring, the monitoring requirements. Next slide. <clears throat> this is a graphic of a typical residential system. As you know, major components include a septic tank and a drain field. Residen residential septic systems are sized based on the number of bedrooms in the home. A typical residential septic tank is about 1,000 to 1,200 gallons. The tank allows for the separation of the solids from the liquid waste stream. In the photo on the lower right is a, is a septic tank cross section. Settled solids are decomposed by anaerobic bacteria present in the waste stream. The separated liquid is transferred typically by gravity to the drain field for treatment. Drain fields consist of a splitter box and a network of perforated pipes and media surrounded by the, surrounding the pipes to assist in the dispersion of the fluid. And there's typically sized for about 0.6 to 0.8 gallons per square foot. The fluid is typically treated by the surrounding soil and vegetation where contaminants like nitrogen and phosphorus are assimilated. By regulation, in order for a drain field to properly treat the fluid, the bottom of the field must be a minimum of one foot above the mean high water table. As groundwater, as groundwater levels rise in coastal communities, the effectiveness effectiveness of the drain fields are diminished by reducing the flow capacity of the drain field. Other failure modes are e uneven distribution of fluid in the drain field caused by overload of fluid in a certain area or poorly maintained septic tanks that may leak and have solids carry over into the drain field. Next, Next slide, please, John. Now the city has done a really good job of eliminating septic tanks within the city limits. We have two residential accounts that have water only and are served by a septic system. And the third is a business. The address is actually Northwest 31st Terrace. It's a self storage facility. Next slide, please. All right, this is the utility service area, which extends you know, from the Atlantic Ocean to just west of Military um, Trail um, to the L <clears throat> E3 Canal, Hypoluxo on the north and the city limits on the south. There are various isolated pockets where septic systems are still in place. Unfortunately, the utility doesn't have, currently have the collection system or infrastructure for those locations to serve those properties. Next slide. The Florida statute allows for the city where central service is available to serve the property to require the property owners to connect to the system within one year. If the septic system's failing, the owner has 90 days to collect 
to connect to the municipal system. Next slide, please. Florida Administrative Code requires an operating permit for non-conventional on-site septic systems that require annual inspections. Currently, uh, conventional septic drain field systems do not require an operating permit and currently do not require annual inspections. And that's it. Any questions, please? Um, so my question regarding that Florida statute, so those three properties, um, did you state that they are not, uh, the city utility does not have the capability to put them on our sewer? Um, no, um, I think there is sewer available. We just haven't pushed the issue on making them hook up. Okay. Um, and would that be uh, under the purview of this board or this commission to start that going for, so that the, the city is fully uh, sewer um, for all wastewater? My understanding is that yes, you can direct the utility director to give them notice that they have one year to connect. All right. Um, I think that's uh, the direction that I'd like to the this commission to move forward. I know that we are getting um, expanding um, water utility with adding Hypolux. So I know that we've had talks with other utilities of Lake Clark Shores, and so I think this is something that you know understanding the different climate aspect with tomorrow being earth day um, we should not be leaving sewage to be treated un or leaving untreated to be put back into the earth and that we should use our wastewater treatment facility that we share with del rey that is uh, adding its capacity so that we can uh, move forward um, the only uh, thing that i'd like to say is that you know we can require it one year but I'd like to give each of the residences and business two years to comply. And so I'll see if the, the commission uh, has any questions or uh, would like to make that motion. Mayor. Yes. Um, I guess to the city, is, that, is there a cost associated with this for the city or is it borne by the, the user and if it's on the city, how much is the estimate for these three properties? So Colin Groff, Assistant City Manager, um, with your direction, we'll have to look at these properties. Typically, any extension of sewer to these properties would be borne by the property owner. Uh, in this case, we need to look at our system. If it's already available at their property line, it is their responsibility to, to connect from the residents or the business to the system uh, on the street. That's something we, we can come back to. We have to go look at it. Until we get direction, we weren't going to look at it. But we, uh, with direction, we'll look at that cost and see what it is. Thank you. All right. Anything else from the, the commission? All right. Um, well, uh, you know, I'd like to for this commission to move forward with uh, determining the costs and possibly having um, a uh, payment system with uh, any of the, the residents or businesses to put them on to a wastewater. But, all right, I'm not hearing anything from the commission, so we will go on to the next item. Next is the discussion of the CBD and oil and its impacts on the city's drug-free workplace policy as requested by uh, myself, Mayor Grant. Our Human Resource Director, Julie Oldberry, will make this presentation. Good evening, Mayor and Commission. Julie Oldberry, Director of Human Resources and Risk Management. Um, Mayor, you had requested this item um, a couple of months ago now <laughs> and um, I really just put together in the backup just some general information about um, what our existing drug-free workplace program consists of mm -hmm. um, what you know those are negotiated with each of our collective bargaining units okay. um, there's random testing post incident reasonable suspicion um, so those are all incorporated and then with the CBD, mm -hmm. 
think that primarily what has become the topic of conversation is that it, CBD has been um, removed from the Schedule One of the Controlled Substances Act. So it's okay. now basically considered lawful okay. under federal law and in most states, including in Florida. Um, what the issue is from a drug testing standpoint is that there may be some CBD products that contain enough THC in them to trigger a positive drug test um, for cannabis or THC when you're testing for that. So um, basically, you know, it's important that employees understand that they're responsible for what they put into their bodies and um, that our medical review officer who monitors the drug testing protocols, mm -hmm. he's provided just some general guidance that typically it's a full spectrum CBD that um, can trigger a positive drug test result. Okay. Um, broad spectrum CBD or distilled CBD generally <laughs> don't contain enough chemicals or THC to um, trigger that. But again, you know, this, these aren't regulated by the FDA. So, you know, with things sometimes being on the, they call it the black market or underground, you okay. know, people really just have to know what they're putting into their systems. So um, I don't know if that's answered your questions or? Yes, it does answer my question. I know that um, our Department of Agriculture and Consumer Affairs is uh, uh, licensing the, the CBD or hemp products uh, that are built, uh, sold or manufactured here in Florida. And so uh, I spoke with Salika Brown and so we do have multiple CBD stores or stores that sell uh, CBD products that will have to get a uh, license from the Department of Agriculture and Consumer Affairs to be a wholesaler or retailer. And so uh, kind of, I guess we can wait or we don't have to wait so that it's kind of up to our employees if they would like to use CBD oil. However, do we have a zero tolerance policy um, if they do have a um, false positive for THC? Um, we, I wouldn't say there, that it would be a false positive for right. THC. If there, if there's THC, they're going yes. to test for that. Right. So it's, you know, um, or do we do it on a certain amount, you know, cause they say 0.3% THC is still legal hemp, where if someone has a 0.1% in their bloodstream, does that disqualify them uh, as having violated our drug-free policy? Julie, can I jump in? in our, please. That? Okay, so um, the concept of zero tolerance um, is, is a term that's used often, but it doesn't really apply when somebody tests positive. There's always a follow-up procedure with the medical director in certain cases um, with, um, with the city HR department with legal to determine if the individual who tested positive may have tested positive for some reason unrelated to the use of illegal drugs. Okay. So there, there is, there is a safety net for the employee uh, that um, is initiated by inquiry, usually starting with the HR department. Okay. And Julie, you mentioned at the beginning that, uh, and Jim, that this is part of the collective bargaining process, correct? Okay, and so Correct. Um, I guess this is not something that the, the board can unilaterally uh, or the commission can unilaterally do because it's based upon the collective bargaining. Um, it's a matter of both collective bargaining and it's a matter of, of administrative control over the employees which falls to the city manager. Okay, and so um, I'm in the perception that uh, because of all the different health benefits and you know both physical and mental uh, of CBD that we work with uh, the different unions and the city manager 
to come up with a, a policy that uh, works well for all employees and uh, staff. But yes, Commissioner Penserga. Mayor, I just want to publicly say that I stand with you on this issue because you know the alternative is for a lot of our employees, their alternative is to take pain medication or other pharmaceuticals, and that's often, more often than we'd like to admit, lead, leads to uh, chronic addiction. Um, and so CBD is a healthy alternative from what we know, and it is not addictive. And um, so I stand with you and I understand uh, what you're trying to do, um, but I think that our policies should reflect a sensible uh, threshold, right? Because when you buy a product, it is never, whatever a product, any product we're talking about, it's never exactly pure. Um, even salt has other contaminants. So, um, you know, so Jim, I think you clarified some of that, you know, there is a process and, and hopefully uh, that process will add some common sense because uh, I, you know, if people are taking CBD for their pain, I'd rather that they do that rather than, uh, you know, any of the other common pain medication like Oxy uh, uh, or any anything like, like Percocet. So, um, but that's where I stand. I could attest to Julie Olberry's common sense. Okay. okay. <laughs> and, and, and Thank so you, Jim. <laughs> so that's kind of where, you know, I want to, you know, not necessarily have a bright line rule, but that we have in our uh, drug-free workplace policy something in place so that I understand like you can get a prescription for volume to help you sleep. However, if you're taking that on the job, it doesn't work. Um, so, and they, they can test for that even though you have a prescription. So um, that's kind of where I'm at. And so I'm happy with uh, the response that um, the city staff, uh, our policy allows for uh, responsible CBD use. Um, right. All right. Thank you. Thank our you. Next, our next is proposed resolution number 20-033. Uh, authorize issuance of a not to exceed 43 million principal amount of taxable utility system refunding bond series 2020A in order to refund a portion of the city's utility system revenue bond series 2012 and not to exceed 11 million principal amount of tax exempt utility system refunding bond series 2020B in order to refund all of the city's utility system revenue bond series 2018. Um, my, my one question is, is how much money are we saving uh, with the new interest rates? Uh, good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. Mara Fredrickson, Director of Financial Services. Um, your net present value savings, you're saving about um, 1.5 million, 1.2 million on your 2012 and 4.6 um, million on your 2018 bond. Well, Mara, thank you for the, the, the savings to the city and to our taxpayers. So. If there's any, no further questions, may I have a motion to approve? So move. Second. All those in favor, state so by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion passes unanimously. All right. Uh, discussion concerning adding gender neutral signage to available single occupancy restrooms within the city. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I do have some prepared remarks, so I hope you'll. Uh, indulge me. Uh, I, I think it's safe to say that we're, we all take uh, great pride in the work that our city staff has already done uh, to make this city more inclusive, respectful, and accommodating of all of our residents. Um, you know, whether we're referring to our very robust non-discrimination policy, the steps, the steps we've taken to achieve ADA compliance, we've done excellent in that direction, or the programs that we've supported, we are really leading the way here in building a progressive and modern city. And what I am proposing tonight, I believe, is just a natural extension of that work. I am seeking the support of all of you, my fellow commissioners, to direct the city manager to designate all city-owned single occupancy bathrooms as gender neutral. And this is an example of a small change in terms of labor and cost. It is negligible. 
uh, but can have a significant impact in the lives of people, particularly of our transgendered neighbors and coworkers. And um, you know, for anybody that may not know, I thought this was important to add that uh, transgendered people are just like any of you and me, except that they were assigned a gender at birth that doesn't match who they really are. You know, many have described it as kind of like being trapped in, in someone else's body. I mean, can you imagine how that must feel? You know, the fear, the loneliness, the constant bullying throughout their lives. And we all know what, what that can do to a person. Uh, they're often vilified in the media, harassed, beaten, dragged out of bathrooms, uh, when all they really want, like you and me, is to just be left alone uh, so they can do their business, literally. Um, and so this proposal says to them that this city government believes that you have the right to be safe. Uh, you can use the bathroom and not be afraid. So while the rest of us think nothing of going to the bathroom, it's no big deal, uh, they are in constant fear. But you know, tonight, I think we have the ability to fix that in our city. Um, and let me also say that m just about all of us already use gender neutral single occupancy bathrooms. That's what our bathrooms at home are. Only one person at a time can use it and anyone regardless of their gender can use it. In fact, many small businesses, let's say a cafe, um, or you know, already recognize that it's both impractical and uneconomical to have gendered single occupancy bathrooms. So imagine for a moment that we are at a cafe and you have two single occupancy bathrooms, one designated male and the other female. And uh, for example, there are two women who need to use the bathroom. You know, it's kind of ridiculous to say that, you know, only one of them can use the bathroom and the other has to wait even though it's available just because of the signage. Um, so that's also ridiculous on the surface. So now I'll just close my introductory remarks by saying that this proposal extends the great work that we've already been doing. And it ensures that transgendered people or those that do not fit neatly into the box of what we might consider the typical male or female can feel safe to live and work in the city. So as as a city government, I hope that we can lead by example tonight, and I ask for all of your support. No, I'm in uh, support of this, but uh, Jim, I did have a question. Is there any recourse for someone who uses a different sexed bathroom or a uh, violation of any law? You mean recourse against the city? Yeah, so let's say uh, someone who is a male that uses a female bathroom or vice versa. There's no recourse against the city. Okay. Yes, Commissioner Hay. Um, I support it, but the, the only concern I have is, uh, or question, is that currently there are some bathrooms that do not lock and you just push the door in if it says, you know, male and uh, men and push the door if it says women. Um, uh, would we then come back and say uh, these doors would now have to have a lock on them? Uh, and, and and is that a cost to the uh, particular business establishment to now put a lock on the doors? Uh, because I, if, I, if I'm understanding you correctly, uh, 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 Vice, Vice Mayor, um, anybody could use whatever room is available. But when you go in that bathroom, you have the ability and, and it would make sense to lock the door behind you. Sure. Is what I'm hearing you saying. Right. And what I'm saying is that all restrooms uh, do not necessarily have locked doors. It, so now would we come back and from the city and say, now you have to put a lock on those doors because of this change in our policy? Am I making um, sense? Right. Can I respond to that? Yes. Uh, so Commissioner Hay, I just wanna first clarify that my request here tonight is specifically for city owned uh, single occupancy bathrooms, not um, to impose anything on outside businesses. So okay. this is city owned. 
Uh, to my knowledge, I'm not aware of any single occupancy bathroom that doesn't have a lock. Uh, but if, if there is one, it definitely needs a lock. So I, I completely agree with you in that sense. If if there is a case like that, then absolutely. Okay. Good. All right. So, uh, Jim, yes, Commissioner Katz. Um, I just wanted to say I'm um, I'm in full support of this. You know, it in my time working in the school district, to the best of my recollection, um, all the single occupancy bathrooms that I ever you know witnessed were where there was no gender assigned to them. So whether it was the, there were, you know, two bathrooms available for teachers in each hallway, there wasn't a male and a female, there were just two single occupancy bathrooms. Um, the, the library in the school I worked at had a bathroom adjacent to it and it was one single occupancy. It wasn't based on male or female. So um, I'm, I'm in full support of this. It's, you know, Everyone goes in there to do the same thing. And if you're in there alone, right. it really exactly. shouldn't matter to anybody who you are. So right. that's all. I, I should uh, stipulate one um, exception that's the most obvious to me. And that is uh, bathrooms in our temporary buildings, because obviously we will be vacating them soon enough. So, all right. Um, Jim, do you need a motion? Yes, sir. A motion, please. All right. All right. I move to direct the city manager to designate all city owned single occupancy bathrooms as gender neutral using the signage shown as exhibit A with the exception of bathrooms in our temporary buildings. Second the motion. All right, any further discussion? Um, John, anybody raising their hands or asking questions? I did not have that option available. It is available now if anybody would like to raise their hand or type a question. All right. Give a good 10 seconds. I, I do see that there, well, there was one. Uh, Ace Tilton Ratcliffe, I will unmute your phone. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, this is Ace Hilton Radcliffe. I'm at 142 Southwest 13th Avenue. Um, I identify as non-binary and I just wanted to say thank you for this motion. Um, it's a really important one and it benefits everybody, especially when we're talking about uh, bathrooms that have changing tables in them. If they do, this means that anybody can use a changing table as well. And I know that this is frequently an issue for dads who are with babies and they don't have the option to change diapers. So this affects not just the transgender and non-binary community, but lots of other people. So thank you very much. Thank you. All right, uh, anyone else? Oh, Andrew? Uh, yeah, let me unmute Andrew Mack. Go ahead, Andrew. Oh. There you are. Can you just clarify which sign so we know um, it was option one or two? I, I believe you I, did option A, but you want option yes. one, correct? Yes, that was right. my motion. Thank you. All right. All right, John, uh, do we have any uh, other questions or raised hands? That was the last one, Mayor. All right. All those in favor, state so by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion passes unanimously. Mayor, before you move on to the next item, could I ask you to jump back to 11C and ask the city clerk to confirm what the resolution number is on that item? All right, so let's go back to proposed resolution number 20-033. Yeah, on the agenda it shows as 032, but I, and I'm not sure how the motion was made, so I'm asking the clerk to clarify that. Yes, I am looking at that as well right now to make sure that we have the right number. All right. Um, just a moment would you like me to open up the backup material
I see the backup material. Um, but for it some says, reason, uh, I can't see why the number changed between earlier when the when it was published and now. So I'm just checking one thing really quickly. The backup item doesn't have the 32 or 33 on it. The agenda request form from the commission says commission meeting 421 says proposed resolution R20-132. But I believe the information that was given to Mark Raymond to draft the supporting documents was 033. Yeah, and the, in the agenda I also have printed says 033. So if mm -hmm. we can am amend the the reconsider for the to issue the bonds and not necessarily the resolution? Uh, Mayor, I don't think you need to do a reconsideration if you would just permit us to conform the number uh, to to match up with um, the resolution and the bond related documents. We could we could probably hand that up handle that much the same way that we would fix a Scrivener's error in a written okay. document. So I, I will need that uh, a motion to fix uh, the resolution number. From mm. the, thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. Any discussion from the board? Seeing none, all those in favor state so by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Hearing none, motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Mayor. We'll figure out that discrepancy and make sure the documents are correctly numbered. Yeah, as long as we keep the, the interest rate, I'm happy. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, moving on to uh, legal. Jim, discussion and authorization to terminate franchise agreement with FLSC LLC for textile recycling program. Um, there's no question that the, uh, the corporation, the LLC, is in default of the um, agreement they reached with the city. Uh, the city, I believe, has received no payments um, uh, towards the franchise fees that are owed. And um, at that point, I think Colin wanted to address uh, both the issue and uh, either is it Colin or perhaps it's Andrew uh, to address the issue of a request that came in that the city commission meeting table this matter for. Uh, 30 days to allow the vendor to uh, do some kind of workout or adjust their agreement with the city and bring that back. Okay, so um, I guess do we have uh, staff who has received com uh, communication from FLSC regarding the yes. amounts and arrears? Yes. Yes, Mayor. And they, the original agreement contemplated them locating 50 containers within the city and would be paying the city $100,000 for the year. They probably have less than 25. They've been actually able to locate because of a variety of reasons. So they've asked one. They do want to. They've indicated in their letter that they they do want to work out some remuneration for the the you know the the, the containers, but asked to renegotiate it, uh, if you will, to see what, uh, based on the lower number of containers being in the city. Okay. So staff's uh, fine with that. We'll give them the opportunity to sit down and talk about it. We haven't had that chance yet. And so um, I guess the, this commission could discuss that we do it pro rata, that uh, how, you know, I've spoken with um, uh, their attorney, um, Andrew Parks, and so I'll, I'll make that disclosure regarding a FLSC LLC um, to state that we do something pro rata because I know that they did try to put out more um, recycling units. However, they did not meet our land development regulations regarding the, the frontage and location because it is considered a dumpster in that sense. Um, so, uh, does the board want to make uh, an offer or give the staff any sort of consensus what we're willing to accept? Or, or we could work it out with them and perhaps bring back something. If you table the item tonight, we can have that discussion with them and, um, and bring back a recommendation for you. Okay. No, I was just going to say my recommendation is if that 
if they were only putting out 25 out of the, the 50 that, uh, and they were originally supposed to owe 100,000, that they would be paying 50,000 okay. okay. is kind of what I'd like to say. But we'll, uh, if I can get a motion to table or motion counter offer. Yes, yeah, so motion move to, to table. table. All right. And do I have a, I had a second? Second. Thank you. All those in favor, state so by saying aye. Now, are we talking aye. about tabling for 30 days or, or until the next meeting? Uh, I believe the, the, the request was for 30 days. Okay. So it will be at the May 19th meeting. Okay. Uh, and so based upon uh, the motion for the 30 days to the next to the second meeting in May to May 19th, all those in favor state so by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none, motion passes unanimously. All right. Any of the commission want to discuss future agenda items? If not, we can. Uh, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Hold up, hold up. Yeah, I, I, I do have a c concern. Uh, I'm. I keep hearing that zip code three three four three five is is a hot spot, and that just happened to be mainly uh, District Two. And I, I'd like to have some answers as to why is that? Are we overlooking something or what what is that uh, why is that so uh i i would like to have some some answers if uh, if we could as to why uh that zip code and and the, and the whole county uh if not even higher has the highest uh uh core uh core virus uh in this pandemic situation why is it so high is there i mean there's something I we overlook uh, there is a numerous amount of nursing homes, um, which uh, our state senator, Lori Berman, says it's not necessarily one out of five, but one out of four. I'm familiar with uh, all along Federal Highway. Um, we do have the, the hospital there. So for individuals that do not have another address within Palm Beach County, they will use the hospital address is what I heard. In addition, it includes Ocean Ridge and District 3. So I don't know if we're going to be able to determine anything more uh, based upon the evidence that we can get from the, the state um, who is collecting that, but we definitely can have our staff reach out to determine what exactly are the demographics for that zip code. And hopefully we can extrapolate some more information um, and go from there is to make sure that that uh, zip code is not a hotbed for community spread. I appreciate your, your comments, but uh, I would like for it to be looked into a little further because even just for my church, we've had four, and that's that's very high. And you know, then I heard that on on, on the news. Uh, Mayor, what you're saying may may be correct, but uh, I'd like to have some uh, more valid. Uh, information to make me feel comfortable and trying to answer this question to the uh, residents of, of 33435. So I, I need your help, uh, city staff, uh, whatever you can do. We'll pull some information together and disseminate that to the commission. All right. Thank you. Lord. Thank Thank you. you. And uh, Commissioner Katz, do you have anything to say before we head out? No, just a good job on running the digital meeting and congrats again to the two newly elected uh, commissioners. That's it. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you want to do the motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor, state so by saying aye. 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 All right. Meetings adjourned. John. Good thank you. Good night. 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 And if I, night, if I may everybody. wrap this up. And thank you for your support. Uh, this concludes today's meeting. As a reminder, a recorded version of this session will be posted to the City of Boynton Beach's YouTube channel. Links to that channel are available on the City of Boynton Beach's website at www.boynton-beach.org. On behalf of Mayor Grant and our elected officials, the City Manager and the City Staff, thank you for attending today's City of Boynton Beach Commission meeting. Be safe and have a great evening. All right. Thank Bless you. Your hands. <laughs> yes, so <Bye> <laughs>